This is the trusty Weber 57cm One Touch Gold Grill. Today I'm fitting a thermostatic uh, controller to it, specifically the Barbecue Guru DigiQ uh, DX2. So far, this Weber's basically been not modified. The only thing I did recently add was a, um, a gasket to try and get the amount of smoke that leaks under control. On this lovely uh, London morning the idea is to add a thermostatic controller to make this a bit more friendly when smoking uh, especially for long cooks that run longer than six hours from left to right we have the DigiQ controller the DX2 the pit viper fan and the adapter that has to be screwed into the Weber the way the temperature controller works is instead of just allowing oxygen to be pulled in and uh, make fire go the controller decides whether the fire is, whether the pit is too hot or too cold and activates the fan to push air in. So instead of just dragging air through the vents that we have on the Weber, we push air in. And that means that this adapter has to be fitted to the Weber. The instructions for the adapter say to drill a one inch hole in the Weber using a hole saw. Uh, because I only have the one Weber and I'd like to get this right in one take, given that giant holes in my Weber don't seem to be the good way to, best way to go in the future, um, I tested both a 22mm hole and a 25mm hole in a piece of wood first. As you can see in this piece of wood, the 25mm hole is smaller than the diameter of the adapter we have to fit. When we place the adapter over the hole, it obscures it completely. So we're going to go with that one inch hole as advised. The weather forecast is lied, so it's raining outside now. Uh, I've moved inside for some of this. The DigiQ instructions for the converter say that uh, it should be at 90 degrees to your Weber grill handles. So handle, handle, you should probably put it here. I do a lot of my slow cooking with a smoke maker, which you can see fitted over the lower grill. Um, and that can fit in on any of the four directions. It can fit in like it is now. You can move it to there. So the question is, where do we put the, um, where do we put the blower for the DigiQ? We look at the bottom, we need to make sure that the DigiQ doesn't obscure any of the vents. Even though that's going to be temperature control, um, that's only really going to be used on my slower and longer cooks. A lot of the time I'm still going to use these vents. We don't want a situation where the fans are obscured whoops, by the placement of the DigiQ. So at the moment I'm considering mounting the blower under this handle. And the reason for doing that is that if we look at the two vents here, that would put me furthest away from the vent. Um, my blades will be able to move right up to the uh, to the DigiQ, uh, to the blower unit, and um, with the fan sealed, in that configuration, it should be fine for airflow. I guess we'll find out. So where do we place the adapter? The idea is that it should be below the grill. Um, because it does what a vent does, and uh, insofar as bringing air into the uh, barbecue. We also want to place it in a way that we know we can have our ventilation blades fully open and it won't obstruct them. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to try and pick a height and just guesstimate a location for this thing, stick it on with some blue tack, and once it's stuck in place, put the grill back in place to see if it looks good. That's the adapter stuck in place with a little bit of blue tack to see how it sits. I think that might be a bit lower than I want, so I'm going to try and move it up. Uh, probably about a centimetre and see how that goes. So an amount of time in about four takes, because I keep turning the camera off, has passed between um, the previous section and this. But I think I finally found a place where I'm happy with the adapter. You can see that it's sitting below the charcoal grate. Even if I push down on the grate, it's not uh, getting anywhere near it. And if we zoom back a bit, you can see that it's um, it's high enough that I think it'll push air nicely throughout the kettle. Removing the grate, we can see that it's about equidistant between the two grate holders, uh, left and right either side of it. That's about 14 centimeters to the adapter. We can see that the vents can fully open. Um, and that'll be important when we're not doing normal grilling as well.
Right, so now we need a one inch hole on the other side of the kettle, well straight through the kettle where this is going to fit. Uh, step one is going to be to mark it in place. So to do that I'm going to take a hammer and a, uh, a small pointy item and try and make a mark in the kettle. If that doesn't work I'm going to use a very slow uh, electric screwdriver and see if I can mark it that way. Right, that looks like we've made a good mark. Uh, the next step now is to drill a small pilot hole, probably do something around the uh, size of about three millimeters, so that we can drill with the hole saw from the outside in and know that we're hitting the right area. Um, that's where we go back outside. So this is a point of no return. We're about to drill a, a hole in my perfectly good kettle. I've stuck two magnets under where I expect the drill bit to come out, uh, just to catch any iron shavings that come off of that. I have a rather large and unwieldy cabled DeWalt drill, um, but it more than does the job for thin plate like this. We're about to drill the first pilot hole through. I'm going to drill a fairly small hole, then a slightly larger hole, and then I'll come in from the other side with the hole saw. And my kettle is now ruined. It has a hole. So we have a small hole, let's have a bigger hole. This is a one inch hole saw bought from Screwfix, uh, as was everything else for this project, because B&Q are useless. That connects to this uh, Argo, which then plugs into the drill. The Argo from Bosch is universal, doing sizes 14mm to, I don't know, something gigantic. Um, and the hole saw clips into that. Ta-da! Seeing as we have a small, manageable, and easily repaired hole in the Weber, let's fix that by turning it into a gigantic one inch hole. Well, that's the one inch hole that the um, adapter for the DigiQ DX2 will mount around. Holes come up a little bit jagged, so I'm going to take a leatherman to it just to file a few of these bits off. Um, this hole will be completely covered by the adapter, but it doesn't hurt for it to not slice you to pieces. You can now see that the uh, outside of the adapter fits over the hole without coming through and the last thing to do is to screw the inside part of the adapter on. The wider part of the mouth here needs to face down because that's where that's the direction it'll be pushing the air in. The instructions say to make it finger tight, so I'm just gonna do a few turns with that, um, and that's now locked in place. So there you have it. That's the universal adapter fitted to a Weber 57 centimeter kettle. All that's left now is to plug the Pit Viper fan in, connect it to the DigiQ, and make wonderful, wonderful meats.